Mm. Unless you write something over there. No, it won't. Alright. First off, what is the solution to this equation? Okay. Did everybody at least do that much? Yeah. D is equal to negative four thirds. Yeah. So we are simply asking what type of number is negative four thirds? What does the word rational mean? See, this is a great problem because nobody knew it last hour and nobody knows it this hour. Rational means it can be written as a fraction. That's what rational. Rational can be written like a fraction. Can a fraction be written like a fraction? So I know it's rational. Irrational means it cannot be written as a fraction. What kinds of numbers cannot be written as fractions? Whole numbers. Whole numbers can be written as fractions. 10 can be written as 5 over 2. Square roots. The square root of 10 cannot be written as a fraction. So it's not an irrational number. Is it positive? No. Is it negative? Yeah. Yes. What is an integer? It is a counting number, either positive or negative. So it is not an integer. So it is rational and it is negative. So the answer is B. Okay? Um, tomorrow is a math Excel day. For those of you that have not started on 1.1 or 1.2 yet, I am teaching 1.3 today. You have three sections of math Excel work, which is probably about three hours of work. Can you do that in 54 minutes tomorrow? No. Shake your head this way. No. So my advice to you tonight is to go through as many problems as you can and folks, if I am giving you an hour in class, let that be for problems that you say, I don't know how to work this, let me get Mr. Roy's help or somebody's help in class tomorrow. If you have not started on any of it tomorrow, then you're not gonna get very much done, okay? So try to work through you know, half of it at home. Um, today's lesson is all word problems, okay? It is on what's called circular motion. Now, these are not nearly as bad as the word problems that we did in the fall, okay? Um, the first definition is called angular velocity. If a point is in motion on a circle through an angle of alpha radians in time t, then its angular velocity, now that looks like a W, that is actually lowercase omega. It's a Greek letter. Okay, so omega is alpha divided by t. Okay, angle divided by time. Excuse me. Angle divided by time. Okay. A helicopter blade is rotating at 400 revolutions per minute. Find the angular velocity in radians per minute for a point on the tip of a blade. If I've got a point on the tip of that blade, isn't that point traveling in a circular motion? That's what this problem is about. Okay? So I want to know angular velocity. So angular velocity is my angle divided by my time. Now, that angle part is a little bit tricky. Not hard, but it's tricky. If I said to you, what angle did that point travel? Can anybody tell me that? Was it 30 degrees? Was it 180 degrees? 360 degrees? Why does Mason say 360 degrees? Because it traveled in a 
circle. Now, we're not using 360, we're using 2 pi, but that is only part of the answer because it didn't travel just 2 pi. It traveled at 400 revolutions. So it did 2 pi how many times? 400 times. So that's the angle. So the way I'm going to do this is my angle is going to be 400 revolutions in one minute and every revolution was 2 pi radians. Okay? Look at my numerator up here. This is all my angle. My angle, as Mason said, was 2 pi, one circle, but how many times did it make that one circle? 400 times per minute. The one minute is my time. Okay? Now, this is what is called factor label, which we're going to do in every single one of these problems. When I multiply, what happens to the word revolutions? They cancel. Therefore, what units am I left with? Radians per... Is that what I wanted? Okay? So if you have not gotten your calculator out yet, go ahead and get it out. So it's going to be 400 times 2. Now I'm going to write 3.14. You are going to use the pi button on your calculator. Divided by 1, so I'm not going to put it. Okay. It doesn't tell me what to round to, so we'll just go one decimal place. Did y'all get 2513? Yes, sir. Okay. So 2513.3 radians per minute. Okay. Now, this one is not a word problem. It is simply a conversion problem to help you practice. If you are in chemistry now, which is almost everybody, and if you're not in chemistry now, it's only because you took chemistry last year, then you did what is called factor label. We did some of that in the fall. We did some of that this week, and so we'll do it again. I want to convert 240 radians per hour 240 radians per hour to radians per minute. So the word radians is okay. What is not okay? Okay, so I want to multiply by something to get rid of hours. Well, if hours is on the bottom, where do I put it? I put it in the top. I don't want hours. What do I want? I want minutes. Do I know a factor to go from hours to minutes? One hour is... Now, if I were to multiply these fractions, what's going to cancel? So what is my unit going to be? Radians per... Is that what I want for an answer? Folks, if you learn how to use factor label, it will make your life so much easier, not just today. But in science class, in calculus next year, every time you are converting, factor label is a powerful tool. So this just becomes 240 divided by 60, which is 4 radians per minute. All right, example three. A 22-inch lawnmower blade rotates at a rate of 2,500 revolutions per minute. What is the angular velocity in radians per second on the tip of a blade? Okay. So I want to know angular velocity. So my formula for angular velocity 
is what? My angle divided by time, right? Is that the correct formula? Okay. What is my angle? <coughs> it's 2,500 circles. So 2,500 revolutions per minute. And every revolution was what? 2 pi radians per revolution. So once again, my entire angle, all of this is my angle. That is all my angle. My angle was one circle 2,500 times. That's my angle. My time was one minute per minute. Now, what unit do I have right now? Minutes. What unit do I have right now? Minutes. Revolutions cancel, so what do I have? Radians per minute. Do I stop here? Why? Because it says I want radians per second. So we're looking at that. We're looking at the question to know what we do next. So I don't want minutes, so minutes goes where? Minutes goes in the top. I want seconds, so seconds goes in the bottom. Do I know a factor from minutes to seconds? Yes. One minute is 60 seconds. So now I know minutes are going to cancel. So I now have radians per second. Is that what I want? Yes. Okay, so in my calculator, I'm going to do 2,500 times 2 times pi divided by 60. Did y'all get 261.8? Okay, so my answer is 261.8 radians per second. You might have a question on those before I move on to something different. Any questions from those of you watching at home? No. Next type of velocity is called linear velocity. Linear velocity. Okay? If a point is in motion on a circle of radius r through an angle alpha radians in time t, then its linear velocity v is given by s over t. Now, we learned what S, what did I tell you S was for the rest of your life yesterday? Distance. Folks, this is the same definition you learned in ninth grade. Velocity is distance over time. Except in this case, what type of distance is this? Arc length. Arc length. So velocity is equal to arc length divided by time. Now, did we determine a formula for arc length yesterday? What was it? Alpha r. So you can write this formula as alpha r <coughs> divided by time. Now, I just want to give you a quick demonstration of the two types of velocity. Velocity. 
is how fast does this angle change? That's what angular velocity is. How fast is the angle changing? That's why it's angle over time. Okay? Linear velocity is how fast does something travel along the edge of a circle? So it's speed this way. It's distance on the circle over time. Does everybody see the differences between angular velocity and linear velocity? Now, I disagree with all of the mathematicians that have come before me. Linear velocity is a terrible word for this. Why? It's not a line. We discussed this yesterday. The earth is not flat. A circle is not flat on the edge. This should be called... Arcular velocity? I like arcular velocity. Arc velocity? I like arcular better. Arcular is not a word. Well, we should create a word called arcular. All right. A propeller with a radius of 1.2 meters is rotating at 1,400 revolutions per minute as shown in figure 1.25, which it looks like we're missing, what is the linear velocity in meters per minute for a point on the tip of the propeller? So it's asking me for linear velocity. So velocity is arc length divided by time. And right away, I'm going to say, I know what arc length is. It's alpha times radius over time. Now, this is exactly like the first problem we just did. Ignore the R. Ignore the R. What's alpha over time? Isn't that what we just did? So what is it? What is my alpha? 1,400 circles, and each circle is 2 pi. So it's 1,400 revolutions per minute times 2 pi radians per revolution the only thing missing is what the radius so times 1.2 meters. Okay? Now, I can tell you the way, this is how, what's the only thing wrong with the way I, look at factor label and somebody tell me what's wrong. Look at factor label up there, look at your units, Cancel them out and tell me what's odd or wrong. You still have Revolutions are going to cancel, right? What do I want my answer to be? Well, meters per minute. I've got a radian stuck in there, don't I? And the way the book did this is they divided by um, one radian. Because they were just saying that, um, I don't know, that's, that's how they did that. It doesn't make any sense to me, but that's how they did that. Actually, you know what, they didn't even put the word radian. I don't know why. That doesn't make any sense. They didn't put the word radian in there. They didn't put the word radian. That's how they did it. All right. So either way, what is my answer going to be? 1,400 <coughs> times 2 times pi times 
are doing this by one decimal or two decimals? Uh, it doesn't tell us. Again, it doesn't tell us what to round to, so I guess one will be fine. Did y'all get 10,555? Yes. 0. 0.8. And that is going to be meters per minute. Everybody got it? What is the linear velocity? Okay, now look, since I just worked this problem last hour, I'm going to, everybody look at me. Okay? You either have to write small or turn your paper sideways. Because this problem is going to be a really, really long problem. Okay, so I'm just warning you up front, if you write big, you're going to run out of room halfway. This is the same exact problem we just did. I want to know the linear velocity. So I'm going to start way over here. Velocity equals distance over time, arc length over time. And I know arc length is alpha r divided by time. Okay. Okay. What's my alpha? What's my angle? 2,500 revolutions per minute times every revolution was 2 pi. Again, I'm going to leave off the radians. I have to think about why they're doing that. Times what? Times what? What's my radius? If you bought a lawnmower blade, my lawnmower blade is 22 inches. That's the diameter. Okay, so times 11 what? Inches. Okay? Oh, I left off the per revolutions. I'm sorry. 2 pi per revolution. All right, so right now we can see that revolutions is going to cancel. So what is my answer right now? Inches per minute. And I want my answer to be miles per hour. So pick one. Do y'all want to convert inches first or minutes first? Okay. Minutes is on the bottom. I don't want it. So where do I put it? Okay. So I'm going to put minutes in the top. I want hours, so I'm going to put hours in the bottom. There are 60 minutes in one hour. Now, if I multiply these, minutes are going to cancel. What is my unit now? Inches per hour. Well, I don't want inches. I want miles. Inches is in the top. So if I don't want it, I put it in the bottom. All right, I'm going to have to shrinkify this even more. Okay? So times, and I'm going to put inches in the bottom. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know how many inches are in a mile. Andrew, how many inches are in a mile? Andrew doesn't know. So even Andrew doesn't know it. Okay? There are 5,280 Okay, so can we go from inches to feet and then feet to mile? So how many inches are in a foot? Okay, so 12 inches are in one foot. And now we know that inches cancel. So now I've got feet per hour. Do I want feet per hour? No. Feet is in the numerator. So I'm going to put it in the denominator, and I'm going to put miles in the numerator. And word on the street is that there are 5,280. Whoa. Nope. That's why you can't trust the streets. 
<laughs> there are 5,280 feet in one mile. Okay? And so now, feet cancel. All right, what are my only units left? Miles per hour. That's how I know I'm done. Okay? So in my calculator, I'm multiplying 2,500 times 2 times the pi button on my calculator times 11 times 60. And I am dividing that by 12 times 5,280. If it were me, I'm going to put all of this in my calculator. In the numerator, I'm going to hit equals. Then, then I'm going to hit the divide by button. Then I'm going to do open parentheses, multiply those, close parentheses. That's what I'm doing. <coughs> Andrew, is that what you're doing? Uh, you should do that, Andrew. Yes, sir. Andrew, yeah. Andrew, next time I have to video, I'm going to really tape it to your head and make you keep your head still up here in the front. All right, I got 163.6. What's going to be fun is they probably have YouTube blocked at the school. I might not be able to upload my video. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Um, I know y'all probably can't read all this. So, actually, just... No. called this is called linear velocity in terms of angular velocity okay now this is gonna make a lot of sense to you velocity is equal to linear velocity is equal to arc length divided by time right and we just said that arc length was what alpha times r Divided by time. Right? That's what we did in our last three examples. Now, I want you to focus on this. Big. There we go. I want you to look at that. What is alpha divided by time? Angular velocity. So if I substitute angular velocity there, angular velocity was omega, so we now have a new formula for linear velocity. We can say linear velocity is equal to angular velocity times radius. Now of all the formulas we looked at today, this is the least important. It is a very specialized formula. This formula is only good if you are given what? Angular velocity. It is only useful if you are given the angular velocity. Okay? What is the linear velocity in miles per hour of a point on the equator? Now, don't write anything down just yet. I just want y'all to look. If you read what is the linear velocity, you would have written down the formula 
velocity equals arc length over time, velocity equals alpha r over time. The problem is, I am not given an alpha over time. But I want you to look at this. Actually, I said that wrong. I'm not given specifically. But what is pi over 12 radians per hour? Pi over 12 is a what? What is pi over 12? An angle. Radians divided by a time. Isn't this here an angular velocity? That is an angular velocity. So really, if you're using this formula, you are given this, which is the omega. So is that formula any different from this formula? No, they're kind of interchangeable. But because they gave you that, then we could write linear velocity is angular velocity times r. We are given the angular velocity. So that's simply going to be pi over 12 radians per hour times, what is the radius? 3,950 miles. Am I going to end up with, once again, we have that radians that we'd have to get rid of. They leave it off on some of these. Am I going to end up with miles per hour? Is that what I want? Yes. Miles per hour? Miles per hour? So that's all I'm doing. 3950 times the pi button on your calculator divided by 12. Okay, I got 1,034.1 miles per hour. All right. All right. That is the last example. Yes. Okay, I was trying to say that I don't have a great answer for you. On these linear velocity problems, they're, they're just ignoring the radian in the problem. Like in the book, they simply ignore it in the problem. And I, I don't have a good answer for you as to why I need to study that. Like, why are they ignoring the radian in those linear velocity ones? I don't know that. Um, my, my, my guess right now, and it's just a guess, is on angular velocity, the word radian is part of the angle, correct? But on linear velocity, we're not focused on the angle, we're focused on the distance. And so since we're not talking about the angle, they're leaving the radian off. Uh, that's the best I can do right now, okay? All right, now I'm gonna turn this off. Tell everybody bye. All right, good luck on the beta trip.